So let's go to the foundation. Desire is the foundation of all of creation. This desire has there's the form of desire to only hold itself in a certain structure, which is called the still, to hold itself in a structure of uh, rock, crystal, certain pattern, like a pattern of uh, uh, copper or metal or uh, fluid or gas, doesn't matter what, but to hold itself in a certain form to keep its quality static. And because it is static, it is called still. Afterwards, there is a desire that wants to develop and to develop itself. It's called vegetative. Well, what do you want to say by vegetative? That it has the desire to hold itself? You want to break it? You need to put into it lots of powers if you break this desire. The vegetative grows itself. It not only wants to hold itself in life, but also wants to open itself in life. I think the desire by which it grows, not only a rock that guards itself, but grows, develops to, to grow. I think the desire in it already includes two parts, absorption and ejection and scrutinizes uh, good, what's good for me, what's not good for me. Uh, walks on these two legs, good and bad, two powers. More developed is the animate. It lives, it has private life, it procreates offsprings and so continues to generations and we are also, we also belong to the animate degree as humans. Uh, my body belongs to the animate degree. I, procreate and live, that's the animate degree. In addition, I have an addition, or people have an addition, which is a social addition, a human addition. I depend on society, I reign society. Uh, also, the animate animals have partially this. They have uh, like uh, flocks and um, this kind of structure, but uh, in us it's more progressed. Now, besides us progressing in our life, in the vegetative, in the animate species, develops in us a the next desire on a higher degree, which is called the speaking degree. What is the speaking degree? It's a new desire, not to simply develop in this life uh, into my body, but it's a desire in order to achieve divinity. What is divinity? A higher force that manages us both the still, the vegetative, the anima that manages and uh, leads us to a certain goal. Previously you called this a soul, this desire which developed in this advanced living is called the beginning of the soul. Let's return to the baby born in the hospital. Where is he with respect to this attitude called soul? Doesn't exist yet. Meaning a uh, man grows, age of 20, 30, grows, maybe he had no soul, beginning of the soul, maybe no soul, but he has this uh, sleeping particle in him, true sleeping particle, but that same sleeping particle hey, also exists in the still from which later on will develop the vegetative and the vegetative, the animate, uh, this particle like a potential of development from one degree to the next. Okay, so when I'm a baby, I'm born in hospital, in me there already exists this potential of upgrading. For sure this future soul exists in you, but it's possible it will develop not in this uh, incarnation, but in ten incarnations. Okay, this particle potential of upgrading existing in me, it wanders in between the incarnation. Yes, the flesh disappears as if you cut up a chicken, eat it, gone. This particle, it has nothing to do with our substance. It is a desire, it is a potential, and it exists and dresses afterwards in the new flesh and more and more as if it accompanies a person. This flesh accompanies and accompanies and accompanies till this flesh starts to feel that I'm fed up with this uh, flesh life. I want something else. And then this particle, besides this flesh desire that does no longer want to exist this way, starts to awaken and say, I invite you to upgrade, to, to realize your um, upgrading. It's called a spark. Spark of what? Spark of soul. 
So everyone has a spark of soul. So the spark of a soul. When does it dress on my flesh? At birth or... Ah, uh, no, it's when a person starts feeling. Uh, what am I living for? This is already the beginning of an active question. You talk to me that also when it's concealed. From that point on, it constantly accompanies. So what does it mean, uh, constantly? When? When does it exist? It doesn't matter if you exist in flesh or not. This particle, the spark, always exists, and upon it dresses uh, flesh and uh, comes off. Dresses flesh, comes off. This uh, spark is eternal, and this flesh comes and goes. Now, there is there such a spark called Oren, which is mine, of course. Of course, he, it is as if I, you will discover this spark, how it went through all the incarnations, all of history, and how were you dressing on it with uh, different flesh. When did it start living, this spark? Uh, before this world started, from the infinite world of infinity. So he's very uh, um, adult, if so possible to say about a soul. And our life and this flesh, it exists for several of millions of years. You start to think that you're old. Uh, where, according to the soul, are you old? You're not born according to your soul. You haven't started. You haven't even started your life. You're tired. I see that you're. This is interesting. This is exactly the point. What does a person identify himself with? Either with his life, with his body, or the spark with the soul? Okay. This is actually what he starts, he begins his path with. 